<laughs> We've got Jean Pierre Lafitte versus Bret Hart. It's a shame because we're sort of going to mostly skip over this because just time constraints, really. But it's yeah. probably the best match on the card. Really hard hitting, and I think it's a testament to Bret, who. In 1995, this was sort of his wilderness year as like a singles main eventer because he's feuding with the likes of, uh, with all due respect to them, PCO, uh, uh, Carl Willett, uh, Isaac Yankum, Jerry Lawler, Hakushi. You know, these none of these, as great as Jerry Lawler is, none of these are main right. event names. And yeah. at the end of the year, he becomes WWF champion again, and then somehow he manages to lose every match pretty much en route to losing clean to Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12. Now, <laughs> as much as I want to talk about the match, we'll have to mostly skip it. I'm going to ask you one question about Brett, and this has been a criticism leveled at Brett. And keep in mind that Brett's like maybe my second favorite wrestler of all time. <laughs> Brett always took his foot off the gas. So he's been accused when it came to house shows. But when it was TV or pay per view, that's when he'd really turn it on. Is that a criticism that's fair to direct to Brett? I, I, on house shows, it was there especially wasn't so much that like, unlike other places before where you'd sit in the dressing room and like it was, you know, w Watts expected you to watch the show, you know, you uh, to learn. It wasn't so much so there. I get the, 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 to me, the recollections of the WWF, WWE locker room was, you know, pretty much just sort of do what you're going to do and you be over here. Going to be, we're not going for three more matches, and it was more nonchalant. So I, I can honestly say I don't ever recall watching a Brett match for the ones that I did where I'd see him being half assing it. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you could probably find that from any of us at any particular point. The thing I noticed about the match with Brett and, and Carl was, like you said, the best on the card. Uh, but Brett is, again, I, I think there was a little bit of sloppiness on Carl's part, which I I think was built into that character, too. Like, it, he should be a bit more haphazard. But with Brett, you know, taking the front turnbuckles. Um, uh, have you ever taken, because this is something else I was going to mention, have you ever taken a front turnbuckle like that? Because he takes two in this match, and it just, and I think hurts. it almost never went wrong, but he, I think once he bruised the sternum really badly doing it. Yeah, it hurts like hell because, you know, you, it, we're not typically used to getting hit in the chest like that. And when you go in, you know, like, you have to understand like the physics of it. So you're going into a corner, you know, it's basically like this. And, you know, Brett's this wide. So you're going in there, your arms are going to be hitting the ropes. And I and I did catch last night how Brett did it because a lot of people that do do it will go in and they'll slow down and they'll sort of like do the, the slap up under. Um, you know, he went into it hard. And, and had to take that on his chest. The reason there, and there's a lot of danger to that because uh, <laughs> with, you know, the, theoretically the heart punch is supposed to make your heart quiver for a second. So you pass out, and I can pin you. In reality, that, that's a, that's a shoot. If you get hit just exactly right in the sternum, look at the guy in the NFL football game last year, right? I forget his name offhand, uh, but he took that shot and he's down and technically died on the field for a few seconds. Had they not had the defibrillator there, they, that guy would have been dead. Uh, this is something else that also happens in car wrecks quite often. The driver gets hit in the chest hard from the uh, steering wheel, and the heart begins to quiver. It doesn't It's not like the heart gets hit and it just stops, right? It gets hit, and it's trying to figure itself out, and it's doing this instead of boom, 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 boom. Well, this you're on your way to dying. It's just a matter of time at that point. So that's a it's a really risky move to do, especially the way Brett did it. It's like those things that you you think you look back on now and you're like, man, I used to do that uh, because there's you know somebody it might have been Funk or somebody else told me at one time here, you know, each of us has a bump tank. You have so many gallons in it. When that tank is empty, there is no gas station to go refill it. So make those bumps count when you're going to take those things. Uh, so like that said, obvious obviously any of us working in the business is going to th throw something a little more into like when the cameras are on and rolling than say you would in, in a house show. But I, I would, I'd be hard pressed to see it, like see a match and say, okay, here's a, here's an old eight day, you know, super eight movie from, you know, whatever building that Brett was in and watch. He's just lazy as hell. I just, I don't buy it. He probably, you know, was taking a lot less punishment than they say he would on TV. Because uh, that's your money shot. You do it in the house, those 
10 or 20,000 people see you do on TV, 10 or 20 million or more see you. So, uh, I, I would, I wouldn't buy that wholesale. I uh, would disagree. 